Today we're going to take a look at the very popular Ionic framework. Think of this framework as bootstrap for embedded HTML5 mobile apps. It relies heavily on AngularJS and provides us with a whole bunch of directives that make mobile app development much easier. We need to install everything we'll need to get cracking on an Ionic project. Gulp, Cordova, and Ahonic. Cordova is used to wrap HTML in a native app and provide the app with some native capabilities. To create our app, we clone the seed project from GitHub. You can also use the command line tool we installed earlier, but I'd like to show you everything involved with creating this app. Let's cd into our folder and install the required npm packages. We also installed some additional stuff through Gulp. We're going to be working mostly in the app.js and index.html files from here on out. As you can see, it's pretty familiar Angular code. Let's change the app to tag tree. Now we run it quickly and see what we've got. This we do by running Ionic Serve, which fires up a little web server for us with auto reload already configured. I want a list of episodes and a sidebar with a bunch of categories in it that we can use to filter by. Let's take some smaller steps so that you can see what's involved. We're making use of the Ion Side Menus directive which wraps the panes involved in a side menu app. We add a side menu content directive. This will contain the main part of our app. Now we can add the menu item on the left. Let's check that out. Well, it did something all right, but to make it work, we need to add a bar with a button we can use to bring in the left menu. To add the bar, we use the ion header bar directive. All these classes and options are extremely well documented, so go check them out. I also want a little button in the header to toggle the left hand view. We want the bar to have a heading, which we call episodes. Now that we have a bit more complexity in the main view, let's put our main content into an ion content directive. Ah, that's starting to look like something. But we have to wire up this button to do something. Let's hook a controller up to the body so that we can code that up. You can see that I'm injecting an ionic side menu delegate, which is a service that Ahonic makes available to us when we want a side menu app. Now we create a toggle left function on scope. And in here, we just call the toggle left function on the service we injected earlier. Lastly, we hook up a call to our new function onto the button. Sweet, we've got a basic structure sorted out. Let's get some data into this app, shall we? I've opened up a JSON feed to tag trees videos, so let's use the HTTP service to consume that. Once we get the data back, we store two variables. One's meant to be immutable, containing all the episodes. Another, which contains the filtered screencasts. To build a list in Ionic, we need to have an element decorated with the list class. And for each item in the list, we need to have an item decorated with an item class. This element will repeat for each item in the list using the standard ng-repeat directive. We bind the item to the title of the episode. Nice, we've got some data. But we still don't have the filter we want on the left. 
I'm just typing out a variable in scope that contains all the items we want to filter by. Back in the view, we used a standard ng-repeat directive to bind the items to the list. We used the menu close attribute to tell Ionic that we want the menu to close after an item was clicked. As you can see, the menu on the left now has a list bound to the array. We wire the anchors up to a function called filter by using the ng-click directive. Usually I would have used URLs wired up with URouter, but I want to keep this focused on Ionic. Let's create the filter by function we hooked up to the anchors. All we want to do in here is overwrite the episodes array with episodes that match the tick that was selected. We use a simple filter call on the array for this. Ok, that works. Let's also add an all option so that we can show all the items again after we chose to filter it. For this, we add a special clause which checks whether all was selected and overrides the episodes array with a full array. That worked! So far, we've been using an auto-reload web server which is great for coding and testing, but the Ionic framework plays well with Cordova, so that you can create apps that can be deployed to the app stores. Let's check this out for iOS. First, we configure the iOS platform for this project. Now, we run the emulate command. This does all sorts of hardcore build stuff for us. We've got a proper iOS app running in the simulator. That's it for this episode. We've barely scratched the surface of what the Ionic framework has to offer, but hopefully enough to let you realize how powerful and well positioned the framework is. See you soon!